we will head over to Chris's team, and that would be the Cleveland Browns. And, uh, you know, went 11-5 last year. Really successful season, I do believe. I, I think it's safe to say that. Uh, what, maybe best year in, I mean, a decade at least? Franchise what, history no, since no, 1965. No, no. <laughs> How, it, it's, the, it's the best year since John Elway's drive. That's yeah, 86. Crazy. Since, since the 86 team. So we're course. talking three days. Ernest Biner. We're talking a long, long yeah. time. Uh, yeah. They they needed some help, but for the most part, it's a pretty good roster already. Like they they've got a, yeah. they got a bunch of good dudes. Uh, this front yeah. office knows what they're doing. Uh, the needs you could say that they might need was edge help, uh, linebacker help, wide receiver, and defensive tackle. Um, Here is what they ended up doing: you got cornerback Greg Newsom out of Northwestern, who is an absolute stud in the first round. Linebacker mm-hmm. Jeremiah Awasu oh. Koromoa out of Notre Dame in the second round. He steel. dropped Be hard. Steel, my heart. Yeah. Oh. What a uh, steal. What a steal. <laughs> round three, Anthony Schwartz out of Auburn, who can absolutely fly. He's a uh, track on the guy. Planet. Yep. Uh, offensive tackle James Hudson out of Cincinnati. I think that was a fantastic pick in the fourth round. Tommy Togei uh, out of Ohio State in the fourth round. Tony Fields, linebacker slash safety out of West Virginia, who is awesome. Uh, he is the the perfect meld to go against like some of these spread offenses now. Uh, safety Richard LeCount out of Georgia in the fifth round, who uh, I think that was an absolute steal as well. And then Demetric Felton running back out of UCLA in the late sixth, uh, pick 2-11. Uh, they, I mean, it, it, this was absolutely, uh, you know, we're, we're not giving letter grades, but this was an A-plus to me. This They yeah. hit everything that they needed to hit. They brought in fantastic players. They, I mean, everything about this was good. Yeah, I agree. And it's going to be contrary to what I said, because Chris is not going to hate this, because this was definitely the best draft in this division. They absolutely needed another corner outside of Greedy Williams over there. And you saw the team struggle when they had injuries in that secondary last year. You, they couldn't stop the pass. And that's their biggest two problems are they play in a cold weather city and their quarterback cannot play in cold weather. I, look, ba- I love Baker Mayfield's personality. I love the commercials. I love all that. But the dude comes up small in cold weather games. It was a guaranteed under every single time. There, there were, and if you remember, poor Cleveland, they had what four straight weeks where they were playing in a damn tsunami. Either in last snow year. or a tsunami, four weeks in a row. Yes, it was it was unbearable to watch. Oh, it's so it, hard. It really was. And look, that's going to happen sometimes. But you know, you look at the great ones. You look at the Aaron Rodgers and the Brady's. They can get it done in those situations. And he just really struggles with it. I mean, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He struggles against it. But the rest of that roster is absolutely loaded. The best one-two running back combo in the league, a terrific offensive line. Of course, the best pass rusher in the NFL in Miles Garrett. Love that they added Greg Newsom in the first round. I think that's a huge upgrade to their secondary. Oh, sorry. I don't know why there's noise playing through my headphones here. <laughs> well, we can't hear it. But, uh, yeah, you're all good. <laughs> okay, good. You guys can't hear it. Fantastic. Because all of a sudden, it just started going wild on me here. I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, the Owosu Oromo, and I know I'm butchering that name, but that's yeah, a Owosu, just yeah, Owosu okay. Komor. Yeah, J-O-K. J-O-K. I, I thought he was the best <laughs> linebacker in the draft. I thought in the he was, draft. And th- in the draft. I thought he was better than Micah Parsons. And then, you know, day two started, and I saw he was still there. I thought he would be the first player off the board to Jacksonville in the second <laughs> round, and he oh. wasn't, and he goes all the way to Cleveland. Cleveland absolutely knocked it out of the park here. A terrific draft. Uh, they just need themselves a cold-weather quarterback. That's it. So I think they're going to be fine at quarterback. I'm not and – and listen, I don't blow Baker, okay? All right, I don't, I don't blow smoke. I, I, have, I have criticized him appropriately, I believe, all right? I don't live in this fictitious world where I think he's the end-all, be-all. I do think he progressed last year and got substantially better. His first offensive coach was Hugh Jackson. His second offensive okay. coach was Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens. His third is Kevin Stefanski. The the gap the 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 tool to measure the separation between Stefanski and Freddie Kitchens has not been created. Okay, <laughs> it don't have a way to quantify how to separate these two. There's not a lingo that has been. There's not words in the English language made to 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 dis, to discriminate those two. All right, and so by the end of last year. You got to take all those. It, that's not just cold weather. When you're playing in a monsoon and you're playing in a blizzard, you, like like playing in cold, frigid weather, but not a blizzard, is different than 
playing in a blizzard. Okay. Yeah, and those games so, were they were, and, and it was four in a row. At some point yeah. in time, you just throw your hands up and say, "We're going out here, and we just don't want to get hurt because we think we're going to make yeah. the playoffs no matter what." Um, so I'm yeah. not going to hold those things against him. I do believe that he progressively got better. Remember, he also lost his best offensive receiver, of course, like early in the season, week yeah. one, week two. And they're getting Odell back. I, I think this is just going to change things. I think this offense is going to be unbelievable. I think Baker's going to be fine. Get to the draft. This is why the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did so well. I think the Cleveland Browns, with the picks they had, did better than every team in the draft. This is not a homer pick. I truly honestly believe that. And it's because they went into the draft with no great need. They didn't have to say, we have to fill a hole here. They were really, truly able to say, this is the best person on the board. Why would we not take them and make our team better? This is the best guy on the board. Why would we not take them and make our team better? And they did it over and over and over again. And I just think this team's really good. So I've talked about Miles Garrett is a fraction of a second away from having 30 sacks last year. I'm talking just right. an obscene number. All right. If the secondary can just cover guys, I don't need the secondary to make interceptions. I don't need them to 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 knock balls down. I don't need them to do anything other than make the quarterback hold the football just a fraction of a second longer than they are now. And Miles Garrett is going to eat them. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> That's it. Eat them alive, dead. <laughs> and it's true. Like the second year was just hurt last year. That was the big problem. Yes, I mean, Denzel yeah. Ward and Greedy Williams are terrific corner. Of course, they got rid of a couple of safeties. And we don't know what them. Greedy's going to be yet because he never right. really played the whole year. But right. Denzel when Ward he does, he's very effective. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, yeah. when Greedy Williams plays, he's a fade for me. When I have a receiver over Greedy Williams, he gave up something like 0.16 fantasy points per route ran against. Uh, it was tough, to, but just once those injuries piled up, that secondary was so, so bad. You, you I mean, add Newsom, and Newsom's had some injury issues, but you add Newsom into the mix to where now you can just rotate guys. The thing I like about this is, is you stay healthy because you don't have to play all the snaps all the time now. Right. Is now right. instead of playing every defensive snap, you're going to play 60% or 70% of the defensive snaps. And those 30% you're not playing helps you not get hurt. Helps rest your body, helps save your body. I, I love what they're doing in Cleveland on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I, I, I want to attack your, your Jadavion Clowney pick just one time. Everybody who's listening mm -hmm. to Winning Cures Everything knows this. They've heard me say this before. You don't know how to watch football, and you don't know how to watch defensive line, guys. Everyone just works under the impression that if you're not getting sacks as, a, as an edge rusher or a defensive edge guy, then you're worthless. But no, sure. he is one of the best run-stopping defensive linemen in all of football. When he was in college, he didn't get a lot of sacks. That famous hit he had was on a running back not a yep. quarterback, okay? This guy attacks running backs. He stops the run. Cleveland last year got ran on like their defense was Swiss damn cheese, okay? Yep. He yep. is going to plug the hole and stop the run. That's what we need him to do, by the way. We don't need him getting 12 sacks. I don't need him getting one sack. I got a monster on the other side to do that. Yeah, we just need him to play 12 games, maybe. That's, I, mean, I do need him to available. play 12 games. I that, do need that's him to the do real that. knock on him. The guy holds out, acts like he's God's gift, and he's the savior, yeah. and then the dude can't play more than four games. Like, come on, get real here, man. Get on but the field. But I think field a lot of media people give him crap because they don't. They just look at sack numbers for his mm -hmm. position, and they think that's the only way to grade those guys. Man, some of the, the reason he's getting he's super valuable to teams is, is he helped stop the run for the Titans last year. And, and, and he's actually pretty good in coverage. Us. You can you, you can zone blitz with him and drop him back. Yeah, and he's Crazy enough athletic. to make plays, he's and, super and to fast. Make plays in the passing game as well. So he's there, there big are some. And he's uh, fast. No, he, he yeah. has value. He's just not a pass rusher. Those are two different right. skills. I like sure. having a guy that can stop the run. I tend like to. Uh, I tend to agree with you. I think that. Uh, I think they killed it. I mean, I think they absolutely mm -hmm. killed it. So, thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.